This is the ABS unit. Your vehicle is almost definitely fitted with one and you probably know that it is part of the anti-lock brake system. But do you actually know how it works? Well, you might not think you need to know all the intricate details. However, understanding all the components within the system is extremely beneficial when diagnosing an ABS-related fault code. That's why in this video, I'm going to run you through the whole modern anti-lock brake system so you can arm yourself with some key knowledge for the next time you have an ABS fault. Hi, I'm Tim, and anti-lock brake systems, also known as ABS, have been around for a while and they are a key safety feature for modern vehicles. As I've said, most of us know what they are and vaguely how they function, but they aren't exactly simple, and they rely on a lot of components, both internal and external, in order to function. Simply put, the ABS's main goal is to prevent the vehicle's wheels from locking and skidding, which will allow the driver to be able to steer under heavy braking conditions or uneven road surfaces. If there is a fault in the system, then you will have limited control in these situations, along with some of these common fault symptoms. Brake binding, reduced braking effort, no fluid reaching the caliper, the ABS pump motor being constantly activated, and the list goes on. You'll also likely have the ABS and or traction control lights illuminated on the dash, and a list of braking system related fault codes. So, when you have a fault in the braking system, understanding the workings of each of the components is extremely beneficial in order to diagnose the exact cause of the fault. Why not check out our extensive collection of ABS diagnostic videos here? Also, please don't forget to support our channel by clicking the thumbs up and subscribe buttons down below. Now, let's quickly go over the basic operation of the ABS system before we dive into detail with each component. So, on a basic level, the wheel speed sensors monitor each wheel's rotational speed and identify when a potential wheel lock could occur. In older systems, this would mean this signal is sent to the ABS control module, which would calculate the braking force required for each wheel to maintain traction. However, as this system has evolved, modern vehicles use data not only from the wheel speed sensors, but from multiple other sensors associated with the electronic stability control system to maintain traction and vehicle stability for all round driving conditions, not just during braking. The ABS module uses all this data to command valves to open and close within the hydraulic unit, which maintains, increases and decreases pressure to each caliper, ensuring all the wheels are maintaining traction and rotating at the same speed. During braking, this sequence can occur many times per second and usually results in a pulsing sensation coming from the brake pedal, which is caused by the pump motor modulating the brake fluid pressure. That's the basic function done, so now let's look at the components that make up the anti-lock braking system. First, you've got the brake pedal, which in older vehicles may be attached to a brake booster that then leads on to the brake master cylinder. Next is the ABS unit, which consists of the hydraulic block, pump motor and control unit. This unit, in modern vehicles, can also contain the yaw sensor, lateral and longitudinal sensors, and the brake fluid pressure sensor. These sensors are controlled by the ABS control unit, with the yaw, lateral and longitudinal sensors being internal to the unit, and the brake fluid pressure sensor being internal to the ABS hydraulic unit. The hydraulic unit also contains multiple solenoids and valves, and it is fitted with multiple inlets, which are fed from the master cylinder, and outlets, which feed each brake caliper. Wheel speed sensors are fitted next to the sensor pickup ring, or reluctor ring, which is fitted to the wheel hub. Finally, you have the wheel itself, which in modern systems will use a pressure sensor to read the tyre's pressure, which we will look at later on. Even though components such as the yaw, lateral and longitudinal sensors can be integrated into the ABS unit, they share their function with both the anti-lock brake system as well as the electronic stability program, also known as the ESP, ESC or VSC. The goal of both systems is to maintain vehicle control by utilising the braking system, but they do this in different ways. The ESP is a proactive system that aims to prevent the loss of control before it occurs whereas the ABS is more reactive, activating only when a potential wheel lock is detected during braking. However, due to both affecting the braking system, the ESP control unit and the sensors it uses can also be integrated into the ABS unit. With all that being said, let's now look at how each of these components work in conjunction with one another during the different phases of ABS operation. When the brake pedal is pressed under normal braking conditions, the master cylinder generates positive brake fluid pressure that is transferred through the hydraulic unit, opening the inlet valve all the way to the brake calipers. 
This action presses the brake pads against the brake discs, causing the wheels to decelerate. The wheel speed sensors are constantly monitoring the rotational speed of the wheels, and they send this data back to the ABS module. These sensors are typically active Hall effect sensors, which produce a digital waveform which changes in frequency in relation to the wheel's speed. Older vehicles may use variable reluctance sensors, which produce an analog signal in the shape of a sine wave. The changes in frequency and amplitude of the signal are then received and digitalized by the control module so the velocity of the vehicle can be determined. Regardless of which you have, when braking in normal conditions, all four sensors should show a steady decrease in speed across all the wheels. However, if one of the sensors detects an abnormal rotational speed whilst braking, for example, the wheel is slowing down at a faster speed when compared to the other wheels, then the ABS control module has to step in. Upon receiving this abnormal reading, the control module energizes the solenoid coil corresponding to the affected wheel. This action causes the inlet valve to close, halting any additional pressure increase at the caliper and maintaining its current pressure, while simultaneously allowing pressure to accumulate in the other wheels, ensuring a balanced braking response. If the affected wheel continues to slow down at a faster rate even after this pressure is maintained, the wheel speed sensor will identify a potential wheel lock and the ABS module will increase the electrical signal being sent to the solenoid coil which will open the outlet valve. At the same time, the ABS will also send a signal to the pump motor which will activate and begin to draw fluid pressure away from the caliper back to the master cylinder, increasing the wheel's speed due to the decrease in pressure at that caliper. This decrease phase can occur before the maintaining phase if the wheel speed sensor detected a wheel lock initially rather than just one wheel slowing down more quickly than the others. This can occur when one or more wheels brake on a surface with poor traction, such as an icy road. As the pressure decreases at the caliper, the wheel speed should increase. However, as the vehicle is attempting to slow down, this increase needs to be carefully modulated and should only occur just enough in order to ensure a balanced braking response. So, if the wheel speed sensor detects the affected wheel is now increasing its speed too rapidly, the ABS module will stop sending the current to the solenoid coil, de-energizing the valves and returning them to their original positions. Pressure will now flow again from the master cylinder through the inlet valve and to the brake caliper until the maximum traction point is exceeded again. The ABS pump can also still be active at this time, generating a high brake fluid pressure in the system, which can be applied to the brake caliper. This process happens many times a second until the vehicle has come to a halt or the brake pedal is released. As the caliper is rapidly pressing and releasing on the brake disc, the wheel maintains traction and the risk of skidding is reduced. During all these phases of operation, the ABS control module is also using information from the ESP system to ensure that the braking pressure it is modulating at each individual wheel is not causing the vehicle to over or understeer and deviate from the driver's intended direction. It uses information from the steering angle sensor to determine this intended direction and then compares this to the data from the yaw sensor which measures the vehicle's vertical axis rotation, as well as from the lateral and longitudinal sensors, which measure the vehicle's side-to-side -side movement, acceleration and deceleration. The ESP system works with the ABS module, which will then not only adjust the braking pressure at each wheel to minimize the risk of skidding, but also minimize the risk of the vehicle spinning out of control. The ABS system also uses information from the tyre pressure monitoring system, also known as TPMS, which continuously monitors the pressure of each tyre. Tyre pressure is important to the traction of the vehicle, as if a wheel on one side of the vehicle has less pressure in than the other side, the wheel's size will be smaller and it will therefore rotate at a different speed. As we have seen before, this difference in wheel speed will result in different braking pressure being required at each wheel in order to slow the vehicle down as well as a difference in traction. The TPMS system can monitor the tyre's pressure in two different ways, either in a direct system, which uses a pressure sensor attached to the bottom of the tyre valve, or an indirect system, which uses the wheel speed sensor data to monitor when the rotational speed of each tyre changes over a period of time. And that's the anti-lock brake system covered. We hope you've learnt all the details on how the ABS functions, and if you want to know how to diagnose faults with it, please watch our diagnostic videos here. If you suspect your ABS unit is faulty, then please send your unit in to us for testing, and we can rebuild any faults found.
If you'd like to see more explanations on automotive components and their functions, then please let us know in the comments below. Thanks again for watching, don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.